Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, folks. What is going on? My name is Krishan the Don. Welcome to Tough Love. Before we do anything, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to uh, hit the notification bell so you get all those notifications. Just had to uh, lecture a friend of mine about that. Hit your notification bells. Stop being lazy. That way you know when I'm going live, for Christ's sakes. What's going on, everybody? Tonight, I'm going to be talking about uh, somebody who I think uh, deserves a little bit of tough love. Somebody who's, uh, you know, he just put out an album. And I'm talking about Mr. Ar Arbery Drake Graham. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he put out an album called uh, Honestly Nevermind. And, you know, there's something about Drake. And by the way, before I even start, uh, uh, two things. One, this isn't going to be a, uh, a Drake, I, I hate Drake video. Um, I, honestly, I don't hate Drake. I like some of his music. I think he just, uh, he needs... Somebody in his life, he needs a friend in his life that uh, that is going to give him some honest advice. Not saying I'm going to be that person, but I'd like to be, uh, you know, some people may look at, look up to Drake and look at the way he deals with his relationships. And you might go, oh, good for him. Good for him. I've seen a lot of people on the Internet do that and him do some, you know, real bitch uh, beta behavior. And people cheer it on. And I think it's just because they don't know any better. And maybe you're an, you know, an open-minded person who thinks that way and can have their mind changed and better your life through uh, you know, using Drake as the uh, vessel here. And two, I'm not going to be doing uh, you know, uh, you know, an analyzation of his, his album. You know, I'm not going to go track by track. This isn't a review of his album. Um... If you want that, we're actually going to do that over on Misfit Nation Radio, over on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash The Misfit Nation. If you want that, go check that out. We're going to do that uh, tomorrow or sometime in the next day or two. We're going to go over his entire album. Listen to it uh, track by track here. But I want to talk about Drake, Drizzy Drake, the man. Or the man that we, uh, you know, the what I like to look at it as uh, the many personalities that we've seen of Drake. And uh, something about Drake is that uh, I believe Drake has gotten um, the, the, the simp label put on him. And honestly, I don't believe Drake is a simp. I believe what Drake is is actually... A very talented incel. And uh, that's because he matches the characteristics of an incel more than he does a simp. And there's a, there's a, you know, there's a big difference between the two. Um, for anybody that doesn't know what an incel actually is, I'm just going to read you the definition. The, uh, the definition here of incel says, A member of an online community of young men who consider themselves unable to attract women sexually, typically associated with views that are hostile towards women and men who are sexually active. Now, I think that's a, one of those broad definitions that don't actually pinpoint too much on, um, you know, what an incel actually is, because I think incels are more based in women's attraction to them uh to to them as a person um and getting love from a woman more than just sexual sexuality let's say um or or sexual activity 
as the def- the definition here says. Um, I don't think that's that's what it is, and I think it's actually beyond that. And I think Drake actually falls into this category I'm about to, you know, or this actual definition of incel that I believe is. Because, um, and, you know, a lot of people might be going, hey, Krishan the Don, you're crazy. How is Drake an incel? He can have any woman he wants. He, you know, it seems like he does have any woman he wants. That's why I think the definition here is completely wrong. Um, and again, I'm going to show you a couple examples of why I believe that's wrong, why it's not just about sexuality. It's not just about sex with incels. Um, because in reality, anybody can really get sex. Anybody can pay a woman. Anybody can pay a prostitute, no matter where you live. There's prostitutes all over the place. Um, so if it was about sex, it would be that easy. But obviously it's not. It's about attraction. It's about uh, getting a woman to like you. Not, not necessarily like you, because I don't even believe that. But a woman to be attracted to you. Uh, whether it be your personality, your, your, your masculinity, all of that stuff. Because the thing is, is, is a lot of men think that it's about, it's about money. And it's about, you know, your fame and your clout. And all that stuff. Uh, for instance, I'll give you an example of one of these guys. Uh, DJ Academics. There's a video that's out with DJ Academics. Now, he's in some hot water right now, so maybe not a good example. But DJ Academics says he can't keep a girl even though he's a millionaire. Now, I'm sure DJ Academics, even with his millions of dollars, can get a girl. Problem is he can't keep a girl. He can't keep a girl's, uh, you know, attention uh, beyond the money. And I think that goes into, uh, there's, a, there's a category of men that think that money will solve all their problems with women. Um, now, I, I, I think Drake fell into that category and he's beyond that. And um, now, let, let's talk about the, the album real quick. Honestly, never mind. Uh, this album is made for introverted, passive-aggressive assholes. That's basically what it's what what the whole album is is based on. Um, and it's it, you know it's music for it's music for incels. It really is. Uh, to, you know to feel like it's not their fault that women don't like them. You know, as if they're you know they're misunderstood. Or, or you know, uh, you know. For instance, take the take the album title itself. Honestly, never mind. It's such. It's almost a passive aggressive asshole catchphrase, where it's like you're about to say something, you're about to be honest, and then you stop yourself because uh, you know what? The world's not ready for me. The world's not ready for my honest opinion. Like you're so you're so fucking deep, people can't understand you, um, and I think that's the thing with this whole term introvert. I think introvert is a bullshit term because back in the day, uh, you know, we just called introverts uh, the quiet kids. You know what I mean? And really, uh, what we did with quiet kids is we, uh, you know, whether it was good methods or bad methods, we tried to get the quiet kids to sort of break out of their shell. You know, because that was that was the uh, sort of idea with with just society in general is just you got to break out of your shell. You can't be a fucking quiet hermit your whole life. It's not going to get you anywhere. People aren't going to like you. You're not going to ever get a woman. That's always kind of the thought. Look, I was an introvert. I was a quiet kid growing up. Then I realized it's just not it's it's almost self-destructive. What are you doing? Uh, so yeah, you gotta you gotta break yourself out of those. Uh, you know, really, it's 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 people you know who are just fucking boring, and they're afraid to to jump out of their their shell and show, you know, maybe take a chance of not being boring for a second. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, th- that's the thing is when we create terms like that, introvert. Now there's people. There's an introvert community. And there's, you know, uh, fucking chat rooms and 
hey, I'm going to write a book on being an introvert and how it's just, it just means I'm misunderstood. People don't understand me and I, I can't, I can't be myself. And in, in reality, I think introverts, again, are just boring people. Look, I don't, I don't like hanging out with boring fucking guys. So what, like, you know, I don't think any dudes like hanging out with boring dudes on some man shit. Like, it's just, why? You're not funny. You don't bring anything, uh, you know, entertaining to the fucking conversation. You're a drag. So then it's like, it's like you expect women to fucking like you. No, you gotta, you know, you gotta give them something. And you're not. And that's the thing is, is I think... Drake was that person, and judging by his music, uh, he was an introvert. He was, you know, his music is very introverted, and I think in turn that made him an incel before he became famous. So now, when you look at not only his music, his his actions, uh, it it'll all sort of make sense. Um, and I'm I'm going to show you in a little bit why it, it, it makes sense to me. So, um, if you know anything about, you know, the, the incels, the incel community, all that type of shit, uh, there's a guy who they all sort of look up to, and it's a man or a boy by the name of Elliot Rogers. Now, if you don't know who Elliot Rogers is, he was this uh, fucking beta male cocksucker who uh, couldn't get pussy. So he decided to go on a shooting spree and ended up killing, I believe, six people, injuring more people than that. But yeah, basically because he couldn't get pussy and couldn't get women to like him or find women that were attracted to him or make women attract, uh, be attracted to him. Um and because he felt like he was, uh, you know, what we call now a beta male, which is, you know, just a weak version of a, you know, a man, a man that lacks masculinity and confidence, things like that. Um, and yeah, so that that drove him to go do that horrific thing. And um, I'm going to I guess I'll show you a, a, like a little bit about him. Just so you guys can get an understanding if you don't know him. I'm going to show you a video he did just before. I'm going to just show you a little bit because you know how YouTube is. But a little bit of this video before he did his uh, killing spree. And this was sort of his idea or feeling towards couples and relationships. Give you more of a shot there. There you go. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm just sitting in my car right now, enjoying the view of the beach. Elliot Roger here. And my view has been ruined by this sight right here. In front of me, sitting right there on that bench, is a young couple. I presume about my age. I was enjoying such a nice view until they came and sat down and started kissing. This, this is the reason why life isn't fair. Why does that guy get to have such a beautiful girlfriend while I'm all alone? Why? Why can't I experience something like that right there? They're kissing right now. It's torture for me to watch, but I have to do this. I have to film this. I have to show the world why life isn't fair. I have to show everyone why I hate the world. Because no girl would do this with me. Look at them. He's in heaven right now. Sitting on this beautiful beach with his beautiful girlfriend, kissing her, feeling her love. Yeah, so 
Long story short, that was his thoughts on, you know, just seeing a couple walk past him and, you know, be a couple in front of him. It sparked this feeling of anger and this feeling of uh, jealousy and envy. Um, and based on the idea that he didn't believe that he could attain that, attain a woman being attracted to him. Um, and, you know, the thing is this, right, is a lot of people go, well, what if a guy like that, you know, all he needed was, you know, again, let's think money, let's think fame, let's think this and that, where if, if th this guy just had that, he would, uh, he would be a good person or he would, you know, if he got pussy, he'd be a good person. Now, I think... Let's say you took Elliot Rogers here and said to him, uh, you know what, uh, right before he went on his killing spree, we're going to give you a record deal. We're actually, we actually think you're a good singer. We're going to give you a record deal. Uh, you're going to be the biggest R&B artist of uh, the last 10 years, and you're going to be able to get any woman you can get. I believe that that mentality would become Drake, the rapper that we know. Now, I'm not saying that I think Drake would, you know, end up doing what Elliot Rodgers did. I'm not going down that route. I'm just trying to ch show you the connection of the mentality that we're seeing here. And then I want you to see that it's going to make you understand why Drake behaves the way he does. So, now you take Elliot Rodgers, right? He... Basically, he wanted to see, because he also targeted couples specifically during his shooting spree, or what he thought to be couples. Um, incels that, that don't go as far as this guy did, uh, but there's incels that actually worship this fucking guy. Um, the way they think is that since they can't uh, attain... A loving relationship or have a woman love them that the world is unfair to them you take a guy like Elliot Rogers here you heard him talking he's a boring cocksucker again of course nobody wants to be friends with you you're boring you're a goddamn drag on the on the group so we don't tell you when we're going out you're the weird guy but what I'm saying is these guys like to see in their mentality and their ideology they like to dis they like to see relationships fail. They like to see relationships get destroyed. They like to uh you know Elliot Rogers tried to destroy relationships period. Um they have an anger not only towards women but towards men that can Ha or that women are attracted to, I should say. So, long story short, um, it's it's always it, it to me. It always seems like it's more about them getting back at the guys who you know actually could attract women based on their masculinity or their masculine personality, and these other guys are jealous because they're not that, and they don't think they can be that. Where in reality, all men are supposed to be that, so they can be that. They can achieve that. They just, uh, you know, they have no confidence. So now, again, let me show you why I believe this now is connected to Drake. Because Drake himself is known very much for destroying relationships, you know, having a lot of affairs. He seems to get off on having sex with other people's girlfriends you know, behind their backs. And we all know a guy like that. And, you know, it, you know, we've all met a guy like that, I should say. I don't think most, most of us don't hang around guys like that. They're just untrustworthy douchebags. And they're usually very narcissistic. Um, so, you take a guy like Drake, who, in my opinion, as much as his music is supposed to be this, you know, certified lover boy nonsense. In his in his real life, he doesn't seem to treat women very well. 
um, or treat women in a way of like, you know, you're trying to play off that you're this kind of a uh, fucking pimp or player, but you get really emotional about women. And I'm going to show you a couple things here. So for instance, there's this one here. Uh, and this is, there's a lot of other, you know, stories like this where Drake is accused of breaking up an eight year relationship during a sultry certified lover boy studio session. And, you know, basically the, you know, there, there was rumors, I guess it's true or whatever, uh, that he had sex with somebody else's girl, all that stuff. Now we can get into the guy, you know, being able to, or, or letting his girl, uh, you know, stray, let's say there is responsibility in that, but there is a difference in losing your girl to a better man or a man that was just able, you weren't smart enough to, to protect your girl from, you know, the, the fucking game or teach her the game. Cause you're too afraid she's going to get smarter than you. A lot of guys do that. Um, but there's a difference between that and then a guy that's coming and going, Hey, you're an artist. I'm going to make all your dreams come true. Or you're some broke bitch and I'm going to give you X amount of money or money that's going to change your life. And, you know, all you got to do is, is uh, stray from your relationship. Now, there's a difference in that. There's a difference in that and going, hey, I'm, you know, this is, this is, I'm, I'm attracting you based on who I am and based on my masculinity. And that's what I'm standing on. And you're straying from your relationship because your your man actually lacks that. There's a difference between that. There's a difference between that and actually buying your way into some pussy. There's some men that'll go, hey, look, I can't even argue with you. If my woman goes, uh, you know, somebody offered me a million dollars to fuck me, I might have to go, what are you, stupid? Do it. Do it. You know what I mean? Not saying I'll be there after. But do it. Who the fuck is ever going to offer you that? And, and you know, I'm just saying, not saying that's morally right, but, you know, at what, like, how can you compete with that? Unless you have $2 million, and now we're just basically haggling with a whore, as opposed to, uh, you know, trying to, uh, you know, buy for a woman's love. It's two different things. It's two different things. So that's that's what I'm saying. There's th those type of things. There was uh, even not too long ago, there was uh, Drake getting involved in, you know, commenting and following some woman on Instagram, some random woman. And her boyfriend got, uh, you know, mad at it and this and that. It became a whole thing. And Drake just sort of got off on it. He gets off on that type of shit. And I think it's because I don't think it's because of a competition or anything like that. It comes off as, uh, you know some kind of thing what i believe let me say that it's my theory that i believe he just enjoys watching relationships get destroyed and the fact that he's now an incel that has the power to destroy them himself that's what he's doing that's i think that's completely what he's doing look at this kind of thing here look at this you know this kind of behavior drake Invites 50 to 100 girls at his parties just to ignore them. Just to ignore them. Now, listen. I'm not saying you're, you're going to be able to have time to fuck 100 girls. But the, the story is that he, he invites them there for the specific reason to ignore them. Now, why would a man do that? Why would a man do that? And a lot of people can go with the easy, the easy idea of, uh, hey, he's just doing that to inflate his ego. But I think it's different. I think it's more than that. I think this is deeper than rap, as the youngins say. Uh, I think what it is is it's, it's a man who lacks confidence and, and lacks, you know, let me not, not say lacks, but he's insecure. And it's about reassuring him that women are attracted to him. But I think the reason why you have to do that is because in reality, you know that if it wasn't for the money, 
if it wasn't for the big party, if it wasn't for the big mansion you're inviting them to, and if it wasn't for the fact that you're an international superstar, they wouldn't be at that party. It would be just like back when, you know, you you were in high school and women were ignoring you. So I think when you when you see guys do stuff like that, it's it's more of you know, it's more of reassuring himself, putting a band-aid on a, you know, a permanent scar. Something that he needs to, you know, actually fix and something that he can't face himself. And um, you know, I think uh, you know that that it's it's when he's you see him breaking up relationships seemingly on purpose, it's almost like he's he hates what he can't uh, you know attain himself. So it's an insecurity once again. It's all based on his insecurity. It's not based on competition. Competition is sort of based on, you know, insecurity, even in that, uh, that case. When it's like, I have to see if I can get his girl. There's a fucking odd insecurity there, and there's a lot of men that are like that. And I think it's because they're not facing some kind of emotional thing that was, you know, that is some kind of emotional trauma in their past. I don't know what it is. Um, here's another one. Drake, uh, look at this, just a weird, weird headline here. Have we noticed that every time Drake dates a woman, he's not real? wait, have we noticed that every time Drake dates a woman, he's not really dating her? And that's what this weird fixation that Drake seems to have on sort of pretending that he's in relationships with a lot of these women, a lot of these, you know, celebrities. Here's, you know, a picture of him with J-Lo. Basically, they were... I, and I don't know, maybe he was actually romantically involved with these women. But apparently a lot of them were saying that, no, there was never anything actually going on. Um, the J-Lo thing, I'm not sure about. Supposedly, Nikki, there was never anything going on with them. But he always portrayed that there was some kind of mutual thing going on. Um, and what I think that is, is there's a lot of men who are incels who don't like doing the prostitution thing. And it's because they're looking for something and there's actually even a whole, like, fucking, uh, you know, genre of this. It's called, uh, the GFE. Anybody know what that is? Anybody know? GFE, the girlfriend experience, where there's men that, uh, you know, pay women to, pre to, to pretend to be their girlfriend, to pretend to be in love with them. Uh, and it's not even about sex. It's like cuddling and it's like, you know, the, the loving aspect of a relationship. And they're paying women to pretend that. And I think that's what you're seeing with Drake on a larger level on a larger level, and except he's a guy who actually has a lot of money, who has a lot of money to blow, who has fame, who has, a, you know, a talent. Um, but he has a huge insecurity that I think is going to eventually destroy him. He's going to implode one day. And it's going to be because of this. Uh, we've seen greater men get taken down by women. Or by the way that he went about his relationships with women. Like, it's, it's happened plenty of times before to much more powerful men. Um, but, yeah, Drake lacks confidence. He lacks confidence in, in his own personality. That's why you tend to see Drake act like 50 different people. One day he's Jamaican. The next day he's certified lover boy, uh, R&B guy. The next day he's uh, fucking H-Town's finest, chopped and screwed. The next day, he's uh, doing EDM music. Uh, and that shows you even in his music, even in his own talent, he lacks confidence. There's the culture vulture thing. Uh, there's videos of, of showing how many, how many uh, just verses, word for word, that he's stolen, that he's just said verbatim. 
Um, and that that you know that shows a, a, a lack of of you know confidence in your own creativity, the thing that makes you who you are, the thing that makes you uh, you know attractive to women, the Ghost Riders. I think that makes it make sense to me. The the fact that he seems, uh, you know, just like m- most, you know, uh, famous superstars, he seems very desperate. Whether it's, you know, no matter what it takes, he's going to stay at the top. Um, I just think you see a lot of insecurities in him. And um, people go more to just in trying to insult him because he doesn't seem like a likable guy. Uh, I just don't, I don't say that he doesn't seem like a likable, likable guy. He just comes off as a guy that, uh, you know, I think we've all had a friend that uh, completely changes his personality depending on who he's around. And it automatically makes you like, Oh, wait a minute. Now I can't trust this guy. I don't know who he really is. Is he real when he's with me or is he real? When he's with this person, or is he? Re- it makes you not trust the person. So I think that's that's the true reason why a lot of people don't like Drake. A lot of people say I like Drake's music. I just don't like him as a person. I think a lot of people just sense insecurity, and we all none of us like when an insecure person behaves different based on their insecurities or behaves different based on anything. It's usually insecurities that make you do that though so yeah um again this just proves to you if i'm right in this theory that again money doesn't doesn't fix the problems you have with you as a person it doesn't you're not gonna buy your way out of that you gotta face your fucking issues there's a lot of people who are trying to get rich right now just based on that and some do so maybe it is a good thing that you know some people have that motivation but i think you know there's a there's there's levels there's levels to it moderation moderation is the key so um yeah again you introverts you're not fucking misunderstood you're just not likable that's all it is nobody likes you so become a better human, become a better person societally. Simple as that. Or just accept that you're an asshole. That's what I did. It's working out perfect. It's working out fine. And now I'm, you know, now I'm trying to fix certain things. Cuz I realize there's there's aspects of being an asshole that work and there's some that don't. So, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, people need to understand the difference between misogyny and sexism. I'm a sexist. I'll never deny that. 100% I'm a sexist, but I'm not a misogynist. I don't hate women. I'm not hostile towards women. And I think that's where people need to understand. And that's why I think sexism is actually a good thing. Um, and I think it's good to be a sexist. Just because society, you know, disagrees with me don't, doesn't mean I'm wrong. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. Fucking Romans uh, collapsed at one point, right? So they were wrong, societally. I'm sure there was one, you know, psychopath going around saying, hey, I think we're doing some, some wrong shit here. Nobody listened. So that's all I'm saying. Sexism is good for society. Let's just embrace it. Let's accept that. And it'll make you a better man. So that's my uh, that's my lesson here. If Drake ever listens to this uh, on the off chance, he wants to hear some uh, you know fucking nobody talk about him. Which he's a narcissist, so maybe he does. Maybe he will. Yeah, fix that. Fix that. It might it might make your music a little uh, you know less appealing to women. But at least you'll be, you, you won't crumble in the fucking end. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Shout outs to everybody in the chat there. I appreciate you all. Let's see what you guys are talking about before I get out of here. Before I skedaddle. 
Manosphere Maniac, yo, I totally agree with the statement of the video, sorry, of the video title. If man wasn't famous, I can see him not getting ass, ass, ass. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think that's the thing. I think that's when uh, men like that that are rich and famous are still angry towards women. They think they they thought that doing all that stuff, getting all that uh, you know, all that money, getting all that fame. I'm you know now he's pretending to be twenty different people. That's a lot of work. And then in the end, women still don't love you for who you are. Like, beyond your talent. Beyond your money. It's really sad at the end. That's why I started this, is this isn't a hate Drake video. This is a help Drake and help people like Drake video. And I think Drake's music was so good that it made incels feel like they can be open about being incels and introverts. Like, they, they thought it made them cool, which it was maybe to, you know, maybe in Hollywood it works, but when you're having a conversation with a woman, like, it doesn't go there. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? How do you get her pussy wet? That's what it's all about, getting the puss wet. Let's see, Awaken Nowadays. Drake is a Canadian actor from that high school show. Yes, thanks for the fact, the fun fact. It's called The Grassy. Yeah, and I bet you he, he was getting Canadian pussy from Degrassi, and he was like, this is boring. I want some American snatch. And that's why he became a rapper. I'm telling you, listen, a lot of people... Go, there's no way, you know, he did all that just to get pussy. Listen, fucking again, I, that's why I showed you Elliot Rogers, the other, the, the extreme, I say, on the other side of the spectrum. He went to doing a fucking murder spe spree because he couldn't get pussy. So why is it uh, crazy to think that somebody could do, uh, you know, uh, a constructive thing just for pussy? Uh, Misfit Ramdell, why he sound like he about to cry. That's, uh, he's talking about Elliot Rogers there. Listen, I think, uh, I think we've all been there as men. We've all been to a very desperate place. We've all been to the, uh, what we all call the, the old dry spell. The old dry spell. And, you know, it's a frustrating place to be. It's like the friend zone. It's frustrating to be there. And if you don't know how to get out, imagine how far that frustration goes. Especially Elliot Rogers, who was a virgin his entire life, to the day he died. He just couldn't get it. He couldn't figure it out. He couldn't figure out that instead of, you know, petting a woman's hair and, you know, calling her, you know, uh, you know, sweetheart and calling her love doesn't work. You gotta fucking wrap that ponytail around your fist three, four times. You know? Say, hey, dummy. You don't ask her. <laughs> Jesus Christ, now I'm sounding like I'm giving horrible advice. I'm just saying, you gotta learn how to get the, uh, the, the old panties soaking. That's what you gotta do. Let's see, Misfit Ramdale. You know what? I'm going to give you this one. Shameless plug at the Fallen Misfit 98 on Twitch. Go follow my man, Misfit Ramdale. Much love, sir. Much love. Uh, let's see. I still try to break them out of their shell. Good. He's talking about the quiet kids, the quote unquote introverts. Yeah, stop uh, enabling them. Introvert is not a fucking lifestyle. Just like being an asshole is not a lifestyle. Well, I guess that is. At least accept it. 
Yeah, try to break them out of their shell. We don't need any more introverts. We've got enough of them. Fucking enough. All right. Well, I am out of here, guys. Thank you for joining me. I know I've been putting off tough love. I've been, uh, you know, a lot of news was coming up. So I kept doing that instead. But I'm going to be doing more. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't uh, forget to hit that notification bell so you get all the notifications. And uh, that's it. Follow us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash The Misfit Nation. The Misfit Nation. We'll be breaking down Drake's whole album. That EDM horseshit. That, uh, th that what I called earlier, the album for passive-aggressive, introverted assholes. Honestly, never mind. That's basically, that's how I'm going to say the album every time. Because that's how I read it. I don't think there's any other way to read that inflection. So, yeah. All right, guys. I'm out. Enjoy your evening. And fuck off. Tough love. Are you ready to waste your time? Yeah. Are you ready to get ultra? Never been one for Are you ready to hear the worst rap album of all time? Then crank it up to 11 and download Krishan the Dance 800 Pound Gorilla. Shh, hip hop, we have a problem. Shh, every bad boy has a conservative side. I'm a Milano with problems with 800 Pound Gorilla. It sucks. Don't download Krishan the Don's 800 Pound Gorilla on CD Baby, iTunes, Spotify, and other music platforms. And apologists, no logic with their isms and their prisons for theologists. Beta males make me vomit, I'm an anomaly. I be dipped in gold like I'm.